so with project 2026 came uh, tons of upgrades tons of improvements and some of those improvements are with the speeds and loading speeds so we're gonna show try out and test uh, project 2025 with loading this file later on we're gonna try out loading this in 2026 to see how it has improved so let's click here and click open okay it loaded quite fast in the 2025 but it's kind of stuttering i cannot move around and this is a huge file don't get me wrong uh, most programs will stutter with this file that's why we are using it uh, for testing all the time And here we go. After waiting a couple of more minutes, uh, the file is still stuck. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to crash it through Task Manager. And uh, we're gonna check out how the 2026 works. Uh, there is some kind of feedback after a while, but uh, it's just unusable at this moment. Okay, so now the same file at Project 2026. Let's click on Open. And the file already opened. Uh, it's quite fast, like even uh, the same, I would say, as 2025. Now, you can also see some stuttering. Okay, and now after maybe a couple of seconds, uh, the file can be moved a around a little bit. Uh, I would say this is an improvement, definitely. Uh, maybe if we change the graphics view from conceptual to wireframe, it will do a much better job. Yeah, it's a little bit smoother. And uh, if you turn off parts of the building, I think this could be usable. So it uh, went from not usable uh, with these huge kind of files that are created with huge 3D scapes to usable in the version 2026. So it's an uh, improvement. It loaded a bit faster, definitely. And we're gonna try out some couple of new tests. Now we have open uh, side by side 2026 and 2025. The 2025 is in the white on the right, and the 2026 is on the left in the black. We're we gonna try and open uh, simultaneously uh, a same project to see which one opens faster. So this is the model architecture model here. Uh, I created a copy because you cannot uh, open the same model at the same time continuously. So it's just a copy of this one. And we're gonna open it uh, with the both projects now. And we're gonna click first on the 2025, so give it a little bit of advantage, then quickly click, click on the 2026. So let's go. Okay, so 2026 opened already, even with the disadvantage of clicking it uh, the last. 2025 is still opening it. Uh, now we can see that we can go through the model right here. It's a little bit laggy, but it's a big model. On the 2025, we have maybe a little bit more lag, but that's of course because of the big model. We make these big models uh, for testing reasons, so we can see uh, the limits of these programs. So in this case, the 2026 definitely is a winner. Next up, we have a simple blueprint. I'm also going to create a copy of it and then open it simultaneously at the both projects. Now this should show a little difference, not too, too much of a difference, because most of the optimization 
in the 3D modeling, it's like 10 times faster than before. And projects are maybe double the speed or something like that. So let's check it out. Let's give an advantage again to 2025. Let's click on open. And yeah, opened uh, exactly at the same time. So here uh, we should have no problems here. So also, if you use 2025, sometimes there could be a little bit of a lag with the pen command. They fixed that in 2026 and it's quite noticeable. Also, if you use 2025, you know hatching is a little bit laggy. So let's check out that and see how they fixed it. Let's compare the two. Okay, for now it's quite fast. Let's try to lower the resolution of the hatch. Okay, now we can have some lag and as you can see if we move around we can see the lag also it's noticeable quite noticeable now let's do the same at 2026 okay almost immediately I don't see any lag when creating the hatches and I can see some of the lag when moving around but that's better than before another thing they added which is very welcome a very nice feature to have uh, is the calculator so if you have a rectangle like this one can go down here to see the length and wing width but this also works with every other parameter up here that is uh, number based so when you click on the number you have a little icon that shows that a calculator click on the calculator and here every kind of calculations you do will apply to this parameter so let's say we want to take this 3000 and multiply it by 2 click on equals click on apply and we have now doubled the length of this uh, rectangle. This also works with every other calculation in here. It's a very neat feature. I think would benefit the most uh, when doing drawings and you mess up something so you need, need to uh, quickly add some things up. So they added tons of new features for images. Let's say we have this image here and we want to invert it. So we can go just right here, click on mirror top side to bottom okay so we can correct a little mistakes that we created from before we can also have this crazy feature recognize text which is great to have if you have some text inside of an image just click on the image select the text inside of the image like this one and now it will try to recognize the text here's the text down below that it recognized and we'll try to insert the text in the same format and the same height it kind of did a good job here. Uh, some of the texts that are not quite quality dense, it won't recognize, of course, but we tried on a couple and it was successful all, all the time. Next up, also, we have this merge vector command up here, which is pretty great to have also. So if we do a rectangle on this image, like this, and we click on this rectangle, maybe this text, and click on merge vector and select this image delete vector entities after merge let's say yes and now everything that we selected is inside of this image now as you can see a little bit of uh, error while formatting but that's okay because this was made for uh, formats like lines rectangles and such and hatches and not for text it did a great job for text Another great thing they added was this invert button here. It helps a ton because all the images that are sent to mostly architects and designers are white and black, 
while we want them maybe black and white. So we can just do here, invert, and there we go. We can invert it back up when we are finished. And there we go. And another crazy feature they added is the vectorize image. This uh, functions mostly with lines, hatches, and such. So if you select an image and select a box around the stuff we want to vectorize, we will try to find every uh, element inside of the image and turn it into vectors. So you can adjust the settings here, click on OK. And as you can see, now we can edit this polyline. We can even have some polylines around this text. It recognizes them greatly. If you ever wanted to add a location in your project uh, very fast, now you can. Go into the Insert tab, under the Set Location, click on it. Now you can load an address. Let's type in Zagreb, Croatia. OK, let's just load City of Zagreb. Click OK. Now let's insert it here, press Enter, and there we go. It's quite fast and it's uh, very detailed. So it can lag a little bit, so maybe cut off an uh, area you want to work on and continue for there. But uh, it's a great feature to have, nevertheless. You can also change from the aerial map to mo map road uh, up here. You can change also to hybrid, so you can have both of them. Here we can mark some positions. We can capture an area also, let's say just this area here. And there you go. Now it's separated from the rest of the map. Some great new features are in the AC 3D Architecture tab. Uh, if you don't have know how to use it or you never used it, give it a try. It's very fast, very easy. So let's draw a simple wall here. Let's do like a square wall like this. It will automatically connect. And the first feature we got is uh, starting to be very popular in the industry. Let's go into the window, select a couple of walls. And now we can create a corner window. Okay, this must be adjacent, so let's try it with these walls. There we go. And if you know the AC for ProjectCAD, you know this will be also in 3D. And you can edit it when you go click back on the top. You can edit your window easily like this. Now we have some fixes about the roofs. This is uh, just a simple structure. Uh, but if we select the roof uh, point here and click on the Gable, we can see that the slope is removed and we have a roof remaining. The thickness of the roof, of course, depends on your uh, style of drawing, so you can uh, adjust that accordingly. And of course, if you want to adjust the wall beneath it, you just click on the wall, click on this arrow here, you click on Add Vertex and just adjust it on the size of the roof. With these tools you can create wide varieties of uh, roofs. Uh, let's say if you want to remove even this one, go to gable and then go here, wall, add vertices and pull it up. And there you go, a simple roof made in a couple of clicks.